discussed a potential trade for a wall for Russell Westbrook with the Rockets, but here's more of what Shepard had to say today. Uh, there's no plans to play to, to trade John. Obviously, that, it's unfortunate this time of year. I think the bait and tackle shops are wide open for business. There's a lot of people that get excited on the internet or whatnot, but there's no issues with John and I. There's no issues with John and the Wizards. There's no issue with anybody other than we just want to go out and get between the lines where life makes a little bit more sense right now than it does. So we're getting ready for, for whatever is ahead of us. Now, Wall still has three years remaining on that lucrative four-year contract extension he signed back in 2017. But the number one overall pick in the 2010 NBA draft missed most of the last two seasons after rupturing his Achilles back in 2019. We are now joined by NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski. Woj, what should this mean moving forward for John Wall and Bradley Beal, who are both set to be re reunited on the court for the first time in two years? Yes, and I, and I think that's more the question for the Washington Wizards, not so much what John Wall wants, but what does Bradley Beal want? Because in, in Wall's absence, Beal has become the unquestioned franchise uh, player for them, and he they're building this organization around him, and they want to keep him long term. And you know, I think both Bradley Beal and Tommy Shepard have really liked what they've seen with John Wall in his rehab. They've seen him; ex uh, they, they feel like he's improved his three-point shot. Uh, Tommy Shepard says he's seen the explosion back with John Wall. He's been out of the league for a very long time. I think they want to see what they look like together back on the court and, and, and go from there. Okay, well, how about another duo now to the West? How are the Rockets planning on moving forward with James Harden and Russell Westbrook at this point? Well, they have not engaged on James Harden in trade talk, but Russell Westbrook, they have. Uh, that's not an easy trade to make. And I think for the, for, uh, the Rockets, uh, getting back uh, into training camp and starting the season uh, is probably a more likely scenario than Westbrook even moving. They're going to bring DeMarcus Cousins in to training camp, our Tim McMahon reported, see if they can uh, resurrect his career. He has faced you know, several significant injuries in the last couple of years, and, and he'll get another opportunity to make that Rockets roster. All right. Well, it was a crazy weekend in free agency, but now I want to know what potential significant moves could still be looming this week with NBA training camps opening in just over a week. Well, Tuesday is an interesting day to watch. Bogdan Bogdanovich's uh, offer sheet with the Atlanta Hawks. The Kings have to make a decision. Are they going to match the offer sheet for the restricted free agent and keep him? Or that four-year, $72 million deal, uh, do they let him go to Atlanta? And so they've got uh, about another 24 hours before they have to tell uh, the league and, and tell Atlanta what they're going to do. So they're making that decision. And I think you're going to see some more extensions. There's a lot of extension-eligible players. Brandon Ingram uh, in New Orleans, OG Ananobi in Toronto, Bam Adebayo in Miami. You'll start to see those. And, of course, Giannis Antetokounmpo has until December 21 to decide on that five-year Supermax contract. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I can't believe we're talking training camp already. It feels like <laughs> the season just ended. But, yeah. Woj, thank you so much. Thanks, Ed. NBA Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz agreed to a five-year max extension worth two of $195 million. Wrap your brain around that one. Uh, he's coming off a postseason where he averaged over 36 per. Uh, Jason Tatum, also five-year max with Boston, also worth up to $195 million. Uh, First-time All-Star in 2020 and the Lakers agreed to a deal with Marcus Gasol. The defending champs really reworking that front court. They also traded JaVale McGee to the Cavs to clear up some space for the Gasol assigning a nice and busy times right here in the middle of football season for NBA insider Brian Windhorst. So uh, can we start with Giannis, our two-time reigning NBA MVP, because he enters the final season of his contract, as we all know, but he could sign the Supermax five years, $228 million, to remain with the Bucks. What sort of ripple effect could that have, Wendy, on the rest of the league going forward? Well, well, Hannah, it's really everything. Um, to be honest with you, we just had the craziest week of NBA transactions in league history, but none, nothing is more important than waiting on this Giannis extension. If he extends, the Bucks are the gigantic winners of this offseason. If he does not extend, we're going to see a mad rush and dash to prepare for his possible free agency next summer. And if you look at moves that teams have made across the league, 
whether it's the Miami Heat signing four players to one-year contracts, whether it's the Toronto Raptors tailoring the contracts of their players so that they have more room next year, or the Dallas Mavericks making trades to clear off guaranteed money, those teams believe there's a chance that Giannis may not sign it. And so the whole league, in one way or another, is sitting on the edge of their seats waiting for that decision. Okay, so let's really play this thing forward now. Let's talk about Anthony Davis because the whole world expects him to return to the Lakers. So how potentially could what Giannis is doing or ends up doing impact the type of contract that AD ends up getting? Yeah, it's unusual for AD to delay his re-signing for, for this long. And one of the things he could be watching is what Giannis does. If Giannis elects to sign the, the extension, then we could see AD potentially sign for longer. But if Giannis sets himself up to be a free agent next year, I know it seems hard for them to believe that the Lakers could do it, but that might spur Anthony Davis to only sign a one-year contract with a player option, which is the kind of deal that LeBron James is on, to leave flexibility in Lakers' pay. Payroll. So there's a lot of people watching Giannis Antetokounmpo right now. Um, I know that as you were busy getting all this information, you probably had one eye on the football screen as we all did yesterday and stood <laughs> up when we heard Derek Carr's audible in the Chiefs <laughs> Raiders game last night. Let's take a listen. Western Conference Finals appearance and the Lakers fresh off the title. Agreed to deal with Mark Gasol. They drafted him originally. Defending champs are reworking their front court, trading Javel McGee to the Cavs to clear up some space for Gasol. All right, it's not official until Woj says so. Actually, sometimes Woj says so, then it becomes official. But in any case, uh, we're going with these stories we just told you about. Mitchell and Tatum, the extensions. Why do these deals make sense for the players and their teams? Two foundational cornerstone players for both franchises, the, the kind of players that you build around, you know, that guys want to play with, that represent, you know, your organization. Those are no-brainers, both five years with the opportunity to make nearly $200 million for both Donovan Mitchell and uh, Jason Tatum. All right, Lakers win the title and say, let's get a new guy in the five spot. Why was that move made? Well, a great opportunity there. Once Dwight Howard left for Philadelphia, they bring in not only Montrez Harrell, but now Marc Gasol, a much more skilled you know, future Hall of Fame player you know, who can do so many things on the court offensively, defensively, rebound. And, you know, I think for Marc Gasol, a chance. Remember, this is the organization that drafted him. He was traded for his brother, Pau, before he ever played an NBA game. Now Pau's out living in Southern California. He'll be near his brother and have a chance now to win another NBA title. He won one with the Raptors. Woj using just one of his many phones. Thanks for joining us. Yet another NBA championship. The Lakers have already pretty much renovated that entire roster. They picked up the top two bench scores in the NBA and Dennis Schroeder and Montrezl Harrell also improved their three-point shooting by adding Wesley Matthews to a team that ranked 21st in three-point percentage last season and re-signing KCP to a new three-year deal. Yeah, that should help in that area also. All right, to dig a little deeper into NBA free agency, we've got our front office insider Bobby Marks with us. And give Rob Palinka and that front office in L.A. a lot of credit for what they've done for the team that's about to be defending a championship. But considering what they've done, what else can they do? Yeah, rarely do we see a team flip their roster over, right? right? Of course, they still have LeBron James and Anthony Davis, but Wes Matthews, Montrez Harrell, and Contavious Cole Pope, of course, is back. Dennis Schroeder, they've added. Now, this is what they have left to do. They've got four roster spots. Mm -hmm. They only have the veteran minimum exception that's worth about $2.6 million. But here's the challenge. They are hard cap, so you need to fit those spots under that number, $6.5 million. But the challenge becomes is, and here's a player that's being linked to them, is a player like Marcus Gasol. To get Marcus Gasol, it's got to be on the veteran minimum exception, right. unless you can try to work out a sign and trade, possibly for someone like JaVale McGee. The hard part is he only makes $4 million, so you've got to make the money work. But so far, this team has really reshaped itself. Best team in the West right now. Yeah, it would be interesting if Gasol wants to go West and try to win a second NBA championship. All right, so let's talk about some of the uh, another team, Bobby, that maybe is not getting the attention it deserves based on what they've done with their roster. Yeah, that's the Portland Trailblazers. That's a team that was just fighting to get into the playoffs last year. Right. sneaks into the eighth uh, seed. I've got them as a the number two team in the Western Conference really? right now. Yes, they okay. get an A-plus for the offseason. I know we don't give trophies for the offseason. No, we do not. But they're getting, it, they're getting it from me. And I think when we look at their roster, here is what they've been able to do. They've added Robert Covington from the Rockets. Yep. They've re-signed Rodney Hood. Of course, Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, and Yosef Nurkic is back. But this is what I really like. Carmelo, back for another year. 
Derek Jones from the Heat, uh, Zach Collins returns, Ennis Cantor, um, Harry Giles. And this is what I call them. I call it the $40 million club, <laughs> right? Okay. Cantor and Covington in trades, free agents, Hood, Anthony Jones, and of course, Harry Giles. Yeah. And where I see them, this is a top four team in the Western Conference. You know, they're way up there in the Pacific Northwest. Oftentimes, they kind of get overlooked. But you got to give Neil O'Shea credit for what they've done so far. And Bobby Marks said they're number two in the West right now. We'll see how that plays out throughout the season. Bob, appreciate it. Warjanowski, a couple of all-star players have earned max contracts. We start in Boston, where Jason Tatum has agreed to a five-year, $163 million extension with the Celtics. It includes a 30% escalator clause that could turn that guaranteed 163 into 195 million should Tatum make one of the three all-NBA teams. The 22-year-old averaged career highs of 23 points, seven rebounds, and three assists last season. Celtics went to the Eastern Conference Finals for a second straight year. Also grabbing a max bag, Donovan Mitchell. The Jazz guard getting that same five-year, $163 million extension. Again, that could balloon to 195 if he reaches all-NBA status. The 24-year-old averaged 24 points a game last season, and then he dropped two 50-point games during Utah's